Hello, I'm Ronald Atlas. I'm former president of the American Society for Microbiology, and I'm here today to talk to you about One Health, which is a new concept which the society is supporting. One Health is a collaborative effort of multiple disciplines, working locally, nationally, and globally to obtain optimal health of humans, animals, and our environment. It's an important concept for microbiologists to study infectious disease where humans, animals, and environmental factors interact. Global health issues are headline news for both the scientific community and the lay public. Unfortunately, we find that infectious diseases continue to emerge and re-emerge. Many of these diseases are zoonotic, meaning that animals get the diseases as well as humans. In fact, about 75% of emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic in nature. We also find problems with foodborne illnesses. Too frequently, we see headline news of people becoming ill from eating food containing infectious microorganisms. Many of those microbes enter the food supply through animal contamination. We also have vector-borne diseases where mosquitoes and other insects um, carry the diseases caused by microbes to humans. Climate change and weather pattern changes are impacting the populations of vectors and thus the infectious diseases they cause. We also have waterborne illnesses where microorganisms come through the water supply and cause disease. So there are many challenges for us and many of these link the animal health, human health, and environmental health areas. Among the diseases that clearly link animals and humans, we find bird flu or avian influenza, which is threatening to become a pandemic. Malaria is a vector-borne disease that causes 1.3 million deaths annually. In fact, every 30 seconds, a child dies of malaria. West Nile virus is causing disease across the United States. This is a recent disease which was first discovered by veterinarians who observed dead birds in the northeastern United States. Foodborne infections often are traced back to contamination with animal wastes. We've seen a recent outbreak of disease caused by E. coli 0157 when waste from pigs contaminated spinach. We're also seeing one of the largest outbreaks of foodborne disease currently, and we're not sure whether the tomatoes are contaminated or jalapeno peppers or whether there are other sources that are entering our food supply and causing disease. We're also seeing diseases that traditionally are seen only in the tropics entering the United States. These are in part due to climate changes. They're having a particular burden among the poor in the U.S. and represent a new challenge for those in public health. When we look at the factors involved in the emergence and re-emergence of infectious diseases, we see that some are associated with humans, like growth in urban areas. Some are associated with animals, such as the intensification of livestock production, and some are ecological, such as global climate change. It is, in fact, the combination of human, animal, and ecological factors that leads us to the One Health concept. Among the factors involved in emerging infectious diseases, we see that the intersection of wildlife, domesticated animals, and humans is critical so that some bacteria can be transmitted from wildlife to domesticated animals and onto humans, and a circle of disease transmission can be established. Many of the emerging infectious diseases are, in fact, zoonotic, and we look at a variety of animals being involved as the sources of microorganisms that eventually cause human diseases. In recent years, we've documented a number of instances where viruses and bacteria have jumped from an animal species into humans and caused disease. For example, Ebola was originally found in bats but has jumped into humans on occasion to cause serious disease. 
We've been able to find the reservoirs for many new infectious agents, and in a number of cases, we see cattle and other related animals as the source. But there really are diverse animal populations from cows to bats that are holding microorganisms that can, in fact, jump into the human population. Given the linkage between ecology, animals, and humans, and infectious diseases, there is a real reason to support the One Health initiative. Certainly, One Health has important implications for how we approach research and practice in the veterinarian areas as well as in human health and public health. If we're going to effectively fight emerging pathogens, we need to do so on a global scale. We particularly need surveillance that reaches not only to the borders of the United States, but to all parts of the developing world where many of these diseases emerge. The research needs to be interdisciplinary, bringing together researchers who normally do not work together, but need to be in concert if we're going to be able to combat these emerging pathogens. The value of the One Health concept has been recognized by the G8 leaders. They issued a statement a few years ago calling on us to better coordinate the animal and human health communities in the advancement of public health. The American Society for Microbiology has also recognized that emerging infectious diseases of animals, plants, and humans should be brought together. As early as 1996, the ASM actually briefed Congress and their staff on the issues related to animals, plants, and human emerging infectious diseases. The ASM is actively trying to advance the One Health initiative by improving communication among various disciplines. The ASM has established a listserv for all who are interested in this area and is also creating a virtual journal that will link articles related to One Health. We already have seen at a recent annual meeting of the ASM that many investigators are advancing the science related to One Health. So that there have been studies on uh, methylacillin resistant staph aureus and pets and a number of other areas where veterinary practice and human health are related. Advances in the One Health area depend upon interdisciplinary research. Finding cures, treatments, and preventative measures for many important infectious diseases will benefit from the interdisciplinary research approach engendered by the One Health initiative. When we think of the One Health initiative, we should see it as a cross-cutting activity. We are not trying to create new branches of government. Rather, we are looking to communication links and cooperation across the various areas that traditionally deal with human health in one silo, animal health in another, and the environment in yet another silo. There already are a number of programs being supported by federal agencies that fall within the realm of One Health. For example, in 1999, there was a multi-agency agenda aimed at discovering the underlying mechanisms involved in anthropogenic environmental changes and the transmission of infectious diseases. This particular initiative was renewed in 2007 between the National Institutes of Health and the National Science Foundation. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have a number of research initiatives that aim at pathogen discovery and curbing the spread of infectious diseases. Many of these relate to a new center within CDC that is National Center for Zoonotic, Vector-Borne, and Enteric Diseases. This new center covers a number of areas that are particularly relevant for the One Health Initiative, including foodborne bacterial and mycotic infections, parasitic diseases, vector-borne infectious diseases, and viral and rickettsial diseases. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has primary responsibility for avian influenza research and has been looking at how to diagnose and control this disease in chickens and other fowl. 
There are a number of competitive research programs supported by the USDA that aim at improving food safety, protecting animals, achieving animal and plant biosecurity, and otherwise advancing our state of knowledge of the spread of disease among plants and animals. National Institutes of Health, and in particular the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, has a number of programs that address the emerging and re-emerging disease area. The NIH has been supporting modern molecular methods for being able to develop countermeasures. In particular, we've been sequencing complete microbial genomes from many pathogens. The NIH has also been supporting research on the ecology of infectious diseases. In one important research study, the NIH has had Nathan Wolf looking at the emergence of viruses in many animal populations around the world. Wolf's research is leading us to understand how new viruses emerge. It is also allowing us to see differences between disease transmission in tropical and temperate regions. Other research by Stanley Malloy has shown that genes for toxins can be found in places where one doesn't expect to find them. He found that many toxin genes exist in marine environments far removed from the human and animal populations where they exert their adverse effects. The ASM is supportive of furthering the One Health Initiative through innovative research efforts such as those I've just described. There are a number of things that can be done to further the One Health Initiative. Many of these were identified in a report of the Institute of Medicine authored by the late Josh Lederberg. Perhaps most fundamental is the need for improved collaboration and cooperation across many disciplines and agencies. There is a need for new facilities that can help in the diagnosis of disease in humans and animals. There is a critical need to improve surveillance activities across the globe if we are going to detect emerging zoonotic infections early enough to prevent pandemics. Given that 75% of all emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic, there is a clear need for more research to study zoonotic diseases in relation to host biology. This leads us to call for an action agenda in support of the One Health Initiative, an agenda that involves strengthening disease surveillance dealing with human and animal health surveillance early enough to protect both animal and human populations. This is an agenda that will call for much better communication and collaboration across the disciplines involved in ecology, human health, and animal health. We need to support integrated environmental animal and human health research. For more information about the One Health Initiative, contact the American Society for Microbiology, the American Veterinary Medical Association, the American Medical Association, or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, all of whom are supporting this initiative.